We all have landmark memories in our lives that we go back and forth with. For me, it's 1984 and 1985, I had two children, Matthew and Amanda, so I consider that BK, before kids, and AK, after kids. In 1997, I married my better half, Janelle, so I call that BJ or AJ. And so in my life, I look back at these landmarks. So this story I'm gonna tell you this morning took place AK, but BJ. Does that make, that doesn't help you any, does it? Okay, I'm gonna tell you it was in the early 1990s. I was living in paradise and I had lived there for, oh, since 78, so quite a while. I had a run-in with the law. The outcome, the outcome became favorable for me. How do you like that? Which outraged the officer? Ironically, this officer's name was Officer Fowler. Now I want you to know that I have great respect for the police department. The policemen, um, where would we, we be without them? Who do you call when you're in trouble? I don't mean Ghostbusters, who do you really call? Yeah, praise the Lord for them, I'm happy for them. But this happened to me and so I'm just gonna share it with you. Officer Fowler kept a sharp eye out for me after that incident. He was looking for me to slip up. He stopped me often. He gazed into my eyes, <laughs> smelt my breath. <laughs> he wanted me to slip up. He checked my seat belts, looked throughout my van, checked my brake lights, on and on. Now, Paradise was a small town, so we had often encounters in that town. Soon it became quite the conversation amongst my friends and co-workers. There, soon the snares started, sneers started. Had we been caught in the snare of the fowler, they would jest. <laughs> Fortunately for me, this fowler grew bored. He backed off and eventually he just moved on. But the fowler that we're going to talk about this morning, um, let's see, okay. Oh yes, the fowler we're going to talk about this morning and explore is much more devious and persistent. He never sleeps, he never quits, he never gives up. This fowler is Satan who betrays unguarded souls a thousand different ways. 500 years ago, the Fowler was easy to detect. He appeared as a red demon with a pitchfork, a tail, horns. He had a grimy sneer and was portrayed as an evil spirit. He was a persecutor, throwing Christians into the furnace and others to death for serving Christ. Now I know the Fowler still murders children and does unspeakable terror. However, he is also known as the well-spoken gentleman and romantist. He overturns religion and says he is just trying to make it more rational, more triumphant. His goal is to make religion void and overpower the gospel. Satan is and will always be the great Fowler. Whatever his tactics are, his objective, objective is always the same, to catch men in his net. The Fowler refers to men and women as weak, silly birds. We don't have the skill to avoid the snares, and if we get caught, we don't have the strength to escape. He attacks sometimes like a roaring lion, trying to intimidate us. If that doesn't work, he attacks us like a snake, 
creeping silently along our path, waiting to bite our heels with his poison and attempts to weaken the power of grace. Satan uses a lot of methods to lure us into his most valuable weapon is surprise. He sneaks up and startles the victim. He hopes we'll struggle till we die while still in his possession. I know we all have met crafty individuals who always are looking to exploit our flaws and vulnerabilities. They know we are weak and hopeless without God. We are targets of the power of the darkness who wants to destroy us completely. Here's the trap. The fowler secretly, skillfully sets his net. He uses a tasty morsel to tempt us. He's so clever, you don't even see him, and he tries to attempt, he tries to destroy you. All you see is a banquet. He is so sneaky, he holds his breath and doesn't move. Now, this tactic works for a lot of Christians. However, it doesn't work for those, it doesn't work for those who wicked persons who just walk into sin with his eyes wide open. He would commit a sin even if it was a sin that breaks the laws of the land, let alone God's law. He has no fear or doubt. He believes foolishly he'll be just fine. Not so with us Christians. We are taken by secrecy, stealth, and trickery. We say if we were perfectly convinced it was a sin or trap, we would give it up. If I really knew it was a trap, I wouldn't enter. I wouldn't even get close, we say. We must, must remind ourselves, either serve God wholly or the trapper wholly. Many a person has been trapped into sin, but not knowing it was evil because we were not serving God completely. If the devil comes to your door with his horns visible, of course, don't open the door. But if the devil comes to the door with his hat over his horns, wearing a big smile, let him in, right? This is not a Halloween joke. I'm serious. It's just a metaphor. I am just saying many a person has been deceived because sin has been glossed over and doesn't appear evil. He thinks in his heart, there's much harm in this little thing. Remember after the first drop comes the flood. Take care, Christians, even if the sin is done in secret. Be careful of the common ways of the world. We can't and shouldn't try to deny the worldly person their pleasures without the Holy Spirit's guidance. We are not the judge of others. Satan will not leave a stone unturned to ruin your life forever. There's not a place on earth to walk that is free of the fowler's snare. But here is the good news. Turn to me to Psalms 91. Psalms 91, 1 to 3. Psalms 91, 1 to 3. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Jesus will rescue us from the fowler. All we need to do for his protection protection is to ask and believe. Here we go. 
God delivers people from the snare of the fowler. The deliverer and the deliverance is very, very powerful. First, Jesus delivers us from the snare. When we believe and closely follow him, he will not let us get caught up. If we slip up, secondly, we get caught up, Jesus will still deliver us out of the snare when we ask. The first promise is very precious to some. However, the second promise is precious to others. How does Jesus do this? I'll tell you, listen very carefully. You won't believe this maybe, but sometimes by trouble. That's right, trouble. Trouble is often the way God delivers us from the snare. God knows us so well, he allows us to endure trouble. God knows maybe our backsliding will soon end. I doubt there are many here that have been saved by their sorrows, their griefs, your troubles, your woes, your losses, and your crosses. But if any trouble has brought you to Jesus, it is worth it. Others have been given the great power and spiritual strength and courage so that when tempted to do evil, they say with great determination, I will not do this wickedness or sin against God. Hallelujah. I pray for this great power and resolve. Please touch the neighbor next to you and say, God has an enormous love for you. Do you believe it? Amen. Yes, he does. God is very concerned with his people. The psalmist is certain that only God can shield you, his people, and protect you from the fowler. Jesus provides a way out by breaking the, the fowler's snare. Please read with me Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. Proverbs 3, 25 through 26. Do not be afraid of sudden fear, nor of the onslaught of the wicked when it comes, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Praise the Lord. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived on earth besides Jesus, knew about the traps of the devil. God is both the source and the object of our confidence and protection. When the psalmist used the word surely, no doubt he knew God would protect you. Surely Jesus will deliver you. This deliverance of, from sin is not by chance. It is results of a divine act carried out by God himself. The fowler is a lethal, noxious, and dangerous disease. The fowler is a pandemic of epic proportion. The fowler wants to, you to believe you need to do a thousand or more different things to be saved. The fowler is fake news. The fowler is a fear mongerer. The fowler loves to separate us. The fowler loves to cut us off from Jesus. The fowler uses words to snare us and tries to cut us off from godly influence. Do not allow this snake into your life. Remember we serve a big, big God who promised to save us from the snare of the fowler. Hallelujah for that. Jesus stands ready and willing to save us. He will do this for you, for you, for you, for you, 
for you, for me. Jesus has done this for his people in all ages, for all who have sought a deliverance. Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus' whole nature is all about deliverance. We have no fear of his divine judgment. The Lord will be our confidence and keep your foot from being caught. Jesus God is our all encompassing protection. Psalms 91, 12 and 13 says, because you make the Lord your refuge, the most high promises no evil shall befall you, not even plagues when approached when they approach you or your dwellings. We can depend on God's protection even in our most difficult times. When you ask, even when you're sick, he can, if, he, if that is his plan, to heal you from your disease. But above all, Jesus will deli deliver you from the most deadly plague of all, the plague of sin. We have the assurance that no evil plot against us will be successful as long as God is watching over us. No one can kill us as long as we are, remain in the shadow of the Almighty, Psalms 91. Of course, we all have or will encounter adversity. We may be persecuted, but never abandoned. Cast down, but not destroyed, 2 Corinthians 4, 9. Do not fear the fowler or his snares. Remember that God will keep you safe. Be confident in Jesus. The spirit is beautiful because it is sure and true. God's promises are his bond. He said it. He will do it. God made an oath in Hebrews 6. It is impossible for God to lie. We, have, we can have life and life more abundant if we take God at his word. Now, as we sing our closing song, page 590, Trust and Obey, sing with the great big smile. In fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet. Be happy in Jesus. Jesus.